What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's value hunting. We're heading into game week 38 for So Rare NBA. But before we dive in, if this is your first time here, do me a favor, like the video, hit the little notification button so you know what I'm doing at all times, and make sure you subscribe. Also, for whatever reason, if you found a So Rare channel and you've never played So Rare, well, you can sign up using the link below, and it gets you some stuff, it gets me some stuff, everybody gets some stuff and is happy about it. We're uh, we're diving into game week 38. We're going to try to find a handful of plays, but I'll be honest, looking at the slate for this upcoming weekend, it seems like it's a lot of those like 30, uh, like mid-30, low-30 cap type plays, uh, so it's going to make it a little bit tricky for value itself, but uh, before we dive in to Game Week 38, let's go see how down bad Mike is for Game Week 37. Uh, we're going to look at my current lineups here, and one thing to note, I'm sure we'll talk about him here in a little bit, how about Shingun? Shingun just dropping a 90 bomb on everybody last night. Um, this limited champion's pretty much dead in the water. I don't imagine uh, that doing Doing anything uh great uh but you see the pickup right there you see shingun with 92 oh, doubling up uh Jokic's score which is kind of hilarious Jokic just one more game against the celtics so maybe that does some fun stuff um the only real sweat yeah you see i have shingun over here in my limited contender as well this has jordan goodwin who you never know jordan, sometimes good sometimes jordan goodwin sometimes jordan badwin we have never know if he's actually going to play basketball or not but that one has shingun iq Hendricks, Cami, John, and uh, Goodwin. But you can tell it's a high-scoring week because look at this rare contender. I know Franz Wagner had a terrible game, uh, and he's got another one against the Wizards, which was the thesis of the play anyways. We got 63 out of Freddie, 39 out of Schroeder, 48 out of IQ, uh, and we're still just like miles away from winning anything. So it just goes to show you it's tricky. Although this rare underdog is just one. Uh, that all oh, These two are final, Trey Mann and Micic. You still got Lowry, Jovic, and Berton. Oh, no, Berton's is final as well. A lot of guys we're going to talk about this upcoming game week. Let's go over to game week 38. And as I do that, hey, listen, you can see a link in the show notes. If you haven't signed up for our team hold so rare and VIP level, get you these plays hours way before everybody else has a shot to get at them, uh, which allows you to dive into the market before anybody else. Uh, but we also do live after dark on Mondays and Fridays where we run the optimizer to see what the optimal lineups are before we dive in. Uh, and we also uh, give away a rare tier card. It's a more intimate experience. It's a nice little hang. Usually whoever's on live before lock hangs for another 40 minutes or so. And we shoot the poo, as they say. So here we go. We've got another uh, game week of the all defense, uh, which is fun. Uh, limited contender, limited champ, uh, all defense. That's basically the only the only new thing we'll look at. Uh, one other uh, PSA, public service announcement, if you will. Uh, I'm sure uh, you saw some of the chaos, especially if you were on Live After Dark, uh, where you couldn't really adjust your lineups with about 15 minutes or so to go, and then everybody lost their mind in the Discord and handled themselves embarrassingly. So, but... Um, just a, just a little word of advice, I guess, how I kind of handle uh, lineup building, just in case something like this happens. I, I'll put in stuff early in the day. I'll just kind of get some dummy lineups in my first look without like looking at uh, projections or whatever, just vibes. And then I'll go in there and adjust throughout the day. That just gives you a little breathing room in case something weird happens. At least you have somewhat of a sweat. Like, I don't think I got my... Um, my training lineups in for this game week because of that. But anyways, enough PSAs. That's not why we're here. Let's dive in. Oh, look at these players on a hot streak. Uh, let's dive into some of the, I don't I actually don't like this. Uh, let's dive into some of the better plays for this upcoming game week. We're going to start with the Charlotte Hornets in general, and they're kind of all over the place right now. Mishich, who I, I, I thought was like left for dead, wasn't excited to play him anymore. Uh, he, he's been balling. He had a really great game uh, last night. You can see his uh, limited cards, 835. His uh, his rare card is at 55. But if we look at his most recent performance here, you can see he dropped uh, in the last three games, 27 against the Sixers, 21 against the Raps, and then last night in the Magic, which was a pretty tough matchup, right? Orlando uh, stout defensively, specifically their guards. Mitch dropped 32 on him, so he he's continuing to be like a solid play while Charlotte, sure, Charlotte, while Charlotte remains shorthanded. Uh, Meaches has a cap of 18. He projects for 32 for this upcoming game week. They have two games. It is on a back-to-back, -back, but that's fine. Uh, let's stay with the Hornets, and let's go to our guy, Davish Bertans. Uh, Bertans back in action. 
just a chucker, right? He's not going to get you a lot of peripheral stats, but he will shoot that three ball. He, I like that his year two card looks just as pissed as his year one card. It makes me think he did not take a photo, and this is just the same photo, although he does look a little shinier. Anyways, his year two limited is at $6. His uh, rare uh, year one is at $11. Bertans, again, two games on a back-to-back, -back, has a cap of 12, but projects for over 25 uh, so rare fantasy points. We love that. And now let's go look at some of the more expensive Hornets. Miles, I am a piece of shit. Bridges has a cap of 39, I believe it is. Let me double-check my numbers. Yeah, cap of 39. He projects for almost 55 fantasy points, all right? Uh, he's kind of slow. Well, actually, I forget what he did last night, but he slowed down a little bit in some of his production. I don't know if... Uh, I'm actually not sure why. Yeah, you can see, right? He, so he had this streak in game week 34 and 35, right? He was 44, 30, 23, 26. Bounced back last game week with a 47 and a 41 and then down to 16. So because of this, his cap has come all the way down to 39. Uh, there's probably still some risk in there, but with two games uh, and a lot of weird uh, spots this upcoming game week, uh, 39 for 54, you could do a lot worse. Then Brandon Miller, his cap is kind of averaged out here at 31. Uh, and he projects for over 43 fantasy points, too. Of course, his price is always inflated because he is a rookie. Uh, you can see his uh, year two limited, or his only year. His year two limited is at 39, and his year two rare is at 205. Uh, so there you go. Those are the Hornets. Those all pop. It looks like Scoot Scoot Henderson is back in action for the uh, Portland Trailblazers, or at least off the injury report. I don't believe he's played yet. I think what, well, you might be able to get a little bit of a deal here. You still see inactive player. Uh, the note that I have written down is he is injured, abductor strain on uh, March uh, 0 games, March 6. So, so that's for this coming game week. I don't know. I, I haven't seen any word on Scoot, so let me just put this with a word of caution, or this could be a purchase heading into an upcoming game week. Uh, Blazers are bad, super shorthanded. Uh, his cap is at 25, and he projects for almost 40 with two games. It, the one th I'm actually more concerned about rust than anything else. Like in his first game back, are they really going to play him like 35 minutes? I don't know. Um, my lean would be no, but uh, I, I guess the the case on the other side is like, well, why would they bring him back if he wasn't ready? So keep Scoot in mind. I'm not saying go get him, but that's somebody who's popping off the charts. Speaking of popping up the charge for Freddie, Fred Van Fleet and those those pesky Houston Rockets. Oh, sorry, I got to get out of that. Uh, he's coming off a very impressive performance last night uh, in that game, which was fantasy goodness against the Spurs. So at that point, right, his cap was a 29, and he's dropped in game week 36, dropped to 53, game week 37 to 57 with one more game left. It's against the Clippers, so I don't love it. Um, but Freddie's cap only jumped up to 32 after that performance. So we like that. Uh, he's got a cap of 32. He projects for 43. And in that same, in that same team, Shengun. Uh, Shingun's going to continue to, I think I said this, uh, this past, uh, value hunting or on live before lock that Shingun is the new Halliburton. Uh, he's cause he was playing a little bit poorly, but his cap came all the way down. It's at 34 right now. Uh, and he projects for over 45. Uh, I, again, uh, Shingun just went nuts last night, dropping 86. Uh, I feel like he's got a floor of 40 and now we just saw his ceiling is in like the eighties and nineties. So I don't expect that again. I think that was some, that was some European anger between Shingun and Wemby last night. Uh, but Shingun, I'm probably my favorite play this, this coming game week. I know all of those, uh, those Hornets pop. That's probably my favorite. Um, Listen, there. This is kind of a tough one. Like I was saying, the guys that we've been shouting out, you know, Brandon Miller, Fred Van Fleet, Shingun, Bridges, all in the thirty range. There's not a lot of guys down low outside of like Michi Chu. We talked about him, Bertans. Everybody else, you know, Trey Mann's cap has come all the way up to twenty eight. He still projects to be a fine play, but not the same Trey Mann uh, smash spots that we had recently. I'm just gonna shout out a few more. Uh, Brunson, who missed last night's game, they have two games this coming game weekend. It's not a back to back. Uh, I feel like he's probably going to miss another game. We'll see, but he's going to cap a 41, uh, and he projects north of 50. Uh, Darius Garland, right? We know Mitchell's still going to miss two more games. Insane Celtics Cavs game last night, by the way. Uh, Garland's cap has crept up a little bit to 34. He projects for over 43. If we really need to go dumpster diving here to find some value, two other guys, Bilal Kulabali seems to be back in action. They have two games this game week. Uh, and he is not, uh, it's not a back-to-back. -back. His cap has come to 15, projects for 25. 
Uh, what I like about Koulibaly at any point, he can get you like four steals and three blocks. So uh, if you need to take a shot on somebody, especially for all defense, I mean, all defense, he's an elite play. But even if you're in a contender situation or whatever, I think Koulibaly can be all right. And then Kobe Bufkin, baby, uh, he's going to cap a nine with a projection of 19. I wouldn't go out of your way to go get Cobes, uh, but he is a solid play this game week. And then, like, listen, Claxton's cap has come all the way down to 26, but it's come down because he's been playing pretty poorly. He had a nice bounce back spot last night. Let's actually see where Claxton's prices have come to. Uh, Nikki Clax, baby. Uh, he's got a cap of 26. Uh, so, yeah, 14. It's actually not even that much of a steal. This is kind of overpriced. Uh, and his, well, I guess if you go to his year one, it's only eight. But, yeah. So, ready, he went 25, 26, 29, 14, 21, and then his last three games, 43, 32, and 41. So, maybe Claxton's back in action. Maybe, and like, that seems to be a pretty solid play there. That's really it, though. I don't, you know, Franz is still fine. Jalen Green's fine. Uh, Agbaji's cap is 11, projection 18, but I believe he left last night's game with an injury. Uh, and that's really it. So I, I think it's going to be a little bit of a battle. Maybe we get some more injury news and stuff like that throughout the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, I think more importantly, make sure you tune into Live Before Lock on Friday where we break down some of these sweet, sweet plays. But it's going to be a tough one this game week. Uh, best of luck. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hey, you know what? Drop a comment too. Who's your favorite value play this upcoming game week? Best of luck. Let's get out of here.